What's up, YouTube? Hefe coming to you, Captain Awesome's Fish Room. Uh, having an awesome day, by the way. It's Tuesday, um, but, I mean, there is a little bit of drama. I got a sick child. Uh, my boy is sick. Uh, you know, I think he has a sinus infection, um, but we'll get that taken care of in no time. No problems, you know. Uh, so, you know, if, if you're wondering why I'm being a little bit quieter than I normally am, that's why. Because uh, my boy's back there resting, uh, taking care of his beautiful face and his beautiful self. But uh, anyways, <laughs> sorry guys, I'm a little obsessed with my son. But uh, I got a lot of questions as to why I use these pots. Um, you know, I, I've been asked several times... Uh, so I figured I'd do a video on it and explain why um, I use these pots, uh, you know, inside this tank and down there inside the 40 breeder for the most part. Um, some plants I don't put in there, but um, a long time ago when I first got into plants, I learned this trick. Um, there is a reason I do this, guys. Uh, there is a nutrient-rich substrate inside of these pots, and then in, at the very bottom, covered up by all that substrate, is a root tab, okay? Now, when you put these plants inside of a pot like this, um, and you have a root tab in it, then the substrate that they're planted in inside the pot is uh, nutrient-rich, uh, you actually accomplish several things. Um, well, maybe not several, but a few things. Um, when you get a new plant, uh, and you go right away and, uh, you know, plant it inside a substrated tank, okay? Say you have a planted tank already set up, um, you know, and you go right in there and you plant the, you plant the plant in the substrate where you want it, where you think it's going to look good and stuff. Uh, check out that dwarf baby tears, though, guys. Just purling. Looking butamous. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, say you did that, okay? Now, there's there's a thing inside the planted tank world, uh, you know, I don't know if any of y'all know this, but it's, um, allopathic, um, allopathy. Uh, basically what that is, uh, it's kind of chemical warfare between uh, plants, just like with corals, guys. Um, they have a chemical warfare, like you can't play certain corals with other plants, and blah, 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 blah. Well, what this pot does um, to that effect is it gives the plants, uh, you know, a rooting system where only that plant is there. There's no other way any other roots from any other plant can go inside that pot. And I mean, unless you have some running roots like that that can, you know, leach over. Uh, but for the most part, it, it, you know, it keeps them singly and inside a single pot to where it's only that plant. And when you have new plants inside of a tank, guys, um, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, you'll lose the plant if you don't do this. I'm just saying... When you do a new plant inside of a pot like this, uh, you know it's going to grow. It's going to grow at a better rate. Uh, you won't have as much melting uh, as y'all saw when I got this pearl weed um, and a few other things, the star grass and stuff like that from uh, Mr. Mom's tanks. Y'all saw me immediately put it inside of these pots. Well. If you notice, if you go back and look at all the videos and watch up until now, you'll notice that I didn't get that much melting, uh, or melt off or die off or anything like that, um, and that's because the plants didn't have to work as hard to establish themselves. They had their own little system right there. Now, when you have a, a, a substrate in your tank, um, you know, uh, plants that you already have planted in there, their roots are going to be all throughout, um you know, the substrate, and, you know, they're, they're growing, they're supposed to do that, now, if you have them in the pots, those roots are just going to be in this pot, um, okay, so, the allopathic effect of plants on other plants, that chemical warfare that they can have, uh, won't necessarily occur, uh, that often when you have them in single pots, single species like that. Um, another reason uh, why I have these in pots, guys, is because you can target feed the plants, alright? 
you have a, a nutrient rich substrate and you have a root tab at the bottom like I explained now when you have your filter going uh, your filter is going to flow through that substrate. Now they're flowing through the substrate in these pots, but at a much slower rate. Okay, when you have a filter flowing through your substrate, it's going to flow at a faster rate, and more nutrients are going to be spread out over a more broad area. Okay, when you when you close it off inside of a small uh, container like this, those nutrients are going to be uh, more targeted to the roots of those plants. Um, they're going to get more of those nutrients and the root tab can actually last longer because there's not as much flow going through these pots. Um, there is a downside to the pots. Um, you know, the, the plants can't spread out as they normally would. Uh, so you don't want to, you don't want to leave them in the pots for too long. Um, these plants in here weren't actually supposed to be in these uh, pots this long, but if you leave them in there too long, uh, you know, you, you may risk stunning the growth of the plant a little bit. Um, you can see how it how the, the pearl weed wants to start running, uh, but it can't. It doesn't have anything to latch on to, so it's growing up. Um, you know, that's, that's one problem uh, with these pots. Um, you know, they're really meant to just get plants going. Um, you know, get them started faster, um, you know, get them nice and healthy and vibrant faster. Um, so, you know, that's, that's why I use those pots, guys. Uh, it, it, it's just an old trick that I learned a long time ago, and it works. Um, you know, target feeding the plants. Um, you, don't, you don't have as much flow going through there, so all the nutrients are going to stay in this base uh, for a longer period of time. Your root tab lasts longer. Um, and you don't have any allopathic uh, warfare going on between the roots of your plants. Now, good guys, once they're established, uh, you know, you're not going to see much of that anyway. But when you bring in a new plant and you plant it, um, a lot of times plants will, you know, melt off severely or something like that. That could be an allopathic cause or it could just be you know, the plant establishing itself. But when you have them in these pots, uh, you you don't run the risk of any allopathy. You don't run the risk of a higher melt-off. Uh, I mean, y'all saw me grow these plants. I, I barely had any melt-off, and these pots are why, guys. Um, you know, with every plant that I have in here, um, I, I barely experienced any melt-off because I do these pots. Now, as far as the dwarf baby tears still being in the pots, guys, uh, I haven't taken those out yet because uh, I'm I'm not I'm not really ready to plant them in anything. I don't even want to put them in a pot. They're fine in the pots that they're in. They're growing fine. Uh, you know they should be spreading out. Uh, you can see my lights are getting weaker. It's about trying to, time to change the bulbs. But yeah, so that's why I use the pots, guys. Uh, you know, hopefully that was a helpful hint for you. Um, you know, a helpful trick or you know just give you a you know, a general census is uh, to, you know, how to grow a plant better if you're having a problem with it or something like that. Um, but a few updates before I let y'all go. Uh, you can see here, um, no more wild caught dovi, no more uh, red devil. But what you can see is a male jaguar back there. Um, I've gotten so many requests to grow out another uh, jaguar pair. I figured I'd do it. Now, of course, these aren't going to be wild caught like my uh, original pair was, but they will be F1. Uh, so I figured I'd grow out another pair. Um, that'll give me time to get another big tank for them. So uh, there's my male. Uh, he's growing up. And you might have seen this bucket here. Uh, what I have in here is uh, 10 Feste Juvies, um, which I'm taking up to my buddy over at uh, Fish Paradise. Um, we, he told me that he's been looking for some really good quality Feste. I said, hey, well, I have some. Um, and he said, well, what do you want for them? And I said, uh, I don't know. You got any Madagascar lace plants? He said, hell yeah. And I was like, okay. So he took me over there, and this is what I got, guys. <laughs> I got uh, two enormous Madagascar lace plants. Uh, you can see that one there. That's one plant, guys. There's the bulb and the root system. Some of the leaves are, you know, a little, uh, you know, 
uh, gaunchy, I guess. Uh, but then we have this one over here. has a lot of new growth on it. Uh, just beautiful plants. Um, I've been wanting uh, another one of these for a while. Um, you know, I didn't have much success back when I tried to grow them uh, the first uh, time, back when I first got one of these. Um, but uh, I've done my research over the years, and I feel confident that I'm ready to do it. And I've been asking questions uh, to my buddy, Paducah Fish Fan. Um, he said, you know, he gave me a few pointers. I uh, really appreciate that, buddy. Uh, so yeah guys, that's what I got going on. Um, you know, I'll give y'all a little parting shot of uh, the fish I scared the hell out of today. Um, got that moda Gwens right back there looking sick. Uh, got some, uh, let's see, these are Magnum X umbies. And there's a few uh, Rio Magdalena umbies in there. Got a bean eye right there, right in the middle behind those leaves. And uh, definitely still have some Feste left. I uh, had plenty of those. And so you see another bean eye coming out. Uh, I wanted to show y'all one of the Midases, but I guess they're not gonna. I guess they're not gonna make an appearance for the video. Oh, there's one right there. Look at that beautiful fish right there, guys. God Almighty, look at that Midas. But yeah, guys, so I thought I'd do a video explaining why I use those pots. Uh, you can see more down there. Um, and, you know, they, it really does work, guys. It's a great tip. It's a great way to get plants started uh, much faster. Uh, it's a great way to not experience so much melt-off. Um, it's uh, also a great way to target feed your plants. Um, but you don't want to leave them in there too long because uh, they can't really run that way. So... Um, and plus, once your bigger plants start getting bigger, uh, the root will actually outgrow the pot. Uh, so you definitely want to get them planted, um, you know, at least, I'd say leave them in there about two weeks and then plant them. Uh, you should be set with that. Um, and yeah, that's it, guys. So hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was helpful. Um, again, I apologize about not being, uh, you know, my loud, perky self, but I uh, got a sick baby. And, uh, you know, trying to let him rest his, uh, his beautiful baby boy self. So, with that said, guys, this is what I'm doing. This is what I've done. And we'll see y'all next time. Adios, folks. Big Rig loves you.